Hello and welcome back to Crazy Row Studio. In this video, let's take a look at using the REST API with Python. So in the last video, we looked at the basic network REST API. We saw how to authenticate and also how to use the different endpoints that are available with network REST API. In case you have missed that video, the link to that is in the description. I strongly suggest you take a look at it before going ahead with this particular video. So there are a number of approaches and tools that you could use to make use of the Network REST API. In here, we are gonna use Python to create a web app. The application that I currently have or created is pretty basic and just lays a foundation that you can build upon and customize as you like. The code is available and can be downloaded or cloned from my GitHub page. The link to the GitHub page is again in the descriptions. Uh, the code is public, so you can go ahead, contribute to make this better. This can be a little community project that we can all improve so that everybody in our community can use it. So I will also add details to my blog uh, every time I enhance the code or every time somebody en enhances the code. You all are welcome to send your suggestions via the comment section below or through Twitter or you can also send me an email to my email address. So all the contact information is again in the description. This is also very helpful if in case somebody of you are trying to create a web application that can be used to monitor or get status of your backups and uh, the this particular app can can you know uh, act as a middleware between your networker server or networker endpoint and your front ending uh, networker based app or networker based server wherever you want to save it you can also you know create a custom reporting tool wherein you can you know collect information or data for every now and then from your network server using the API and store it in your own database and then use database uh, then use your database to pull the information to create your uh, report so in the last video we used curl for most of the interaction or using the API or whatever tests with did with API this time we are going to use something called as postman so anybody who has already worked on developing around uh, endpoints might already know what a po what this particular tool does so this particular tool basically is for interacting with any endpoints so let's take a look at how to use this first so i like this way better than curl because on curl as you saw whenever we used curl we got a response from the networker uh, rest api endpoint the output was in a json format but it was thrown on our console and it was all you know bundled up and crumpled up and uh, it was very hard to read uh, the very positive thing about using postman is that transforms the json that the endpoint throws back or returns back into this uh, you know neat little format which is very easy to read and understand so here as you see i have used the url to get the endpoint of all the clients on the networker so again this is my network server this is the port and the endpoint is clients that I'm using right here and I'm using the method get which is requesting all the information from my networker uh, REST API endpoint and if you see here it gives you a neat output which is in a JSON format and uh, if you see the raw you know looks pretty ugly but uh, the rendered output you know is pretty neat and you can go ahead and see how exactly your uh, json schema is formatted or how the json schema is in this particular output so if you see you have a key value pair with the primary key as clients which is basically the main endpoint that you are getting out of this and that key has a value of a list which is again a list of value pair objects each object referring to individual clients so that is how we are going to render so this understanding the schema of your json or the structure of your json is important when you write the code because you are going to render this json file and get in extract information out of this 
to be displayed first let's let me just tell you about the web app that i have created so i'm creating a custom a custom portal or a web app that uh, can be customized to any extent that you need so this is only a framework that i have created so in this framework uh, it is just displaying the client information and the backup information but sky is the limit when it comes to customizing this and uh, also the limitation on the app uh, on the api applies so with your imagination you can you can create whatever you want with this particular framework all right just let me just take you to the code real quick and I'll just show you what exactly is happening in here so i'm using this is my uh, code structure so i'm going to take you or walk you through the code uh, in a later part of the video so here i'm just showing you what exactly i have used so basically i have used flask which is a, a basic web server module for python and you can use this particular module to create a web server of your own i have used bootstrap framework for html which is pretty easy to uh, use and it is it looks very neat and the way the data is rendered out of this html is to jinja uh, so basically these htmls are jinja templates so you know more about this in a few minutes so let me walk you through the code so before i walk you through the code i just wanted to show you the directory structure that i have so if i give this so you will see the directory structure that i have and here i have the main program which is basically the uh, file which is going to run and it contains the web app or the web server code and it also is going to create the endpoints for our web server to go and pull the uh, html pages from and that is going to again have a backup page a, HT, uh, uh, a client related page uh, the layout and navigator are basically just uh, reusable code that we are again I'll, I'll just show you in a few minutes then we have the requirements file which is basically all the modules that are required for your python to run uh, the uh, py backups.py again to render backup html and clients.py to render the client.html let's now take a quick look at the code itself so let me start with main so as i told you we are using flask to create a very basic web server on python and next is about the authentication the authentication code implemented here is not at all enterprise grade or not at all secure so in case you want to use it somewhere with your customers or uh, in any other application you need to rewrite the authentication part so right now what's happening is that i am taking in the inputs from the web page which is the username and password and i am encoding them with a uh, base 64 so this is the code which actually does that here so i'm just pulling the information out of the form which is the uh, login page then i am just creating a string which is of the format user colon uh, password if you remember that is how we provide the authentication or credentials are passed to the networker rest api then i'm encoding that with a base64 encode and uh, then i'm just converting it to ascii so basically these three lines of code is to just create the base64 uh, format of the credentials that's all that this particular page does so this is the login page so once the credential is created or the credential file is created then i just go ahead and redirect it to the backups endpoint so the backups endpoint is defined by this block of code here and if you again take a look at this all it does is checks if the credentials string is greater than zero meaning which a credential has been passed and if it is not then it is just going back to the uh, to the main login page if it is then it is just returning the backup list so backup list is part of the backup.py so before going there i just want to talk about credentials so credentials here since i am saving it in a variable within the server itself 
Now, if I log in to the server and you know provide my credentials and authorize myself, the credentials are going to be there until my uh, server is restarted or the services is restarted. So, if in case somebody else logs in from any other machine to the same web server, they are going to be authenticated automatically with the author, uh, with the credentials that you have already provided. So, as I told you, this is not the best way of using authentication. There are other ways of doing it. And as I told you, this can be a community project. So somebody can implement the authentication part or maybe I can do it sometime in the future and update the code and make it more secure. So let me just take you to the, uh, the backup.py and here is how we have used the here is the code which is basically interacting with the endpoint so so from the earlier code we know that we are, we used curl to interact with the endpoint so we used curl the method get uh, minus k was just to ignore the certificate the user credentials were administrator password we also passed it using the header authentication which is what is being done in the python as well and then there was the endpoint which the request was going through and here in the Python version, we can translate the same wherein I'm creating a header, which is authorization, and it is just putting in the credentials. So, so the credentials is got from the uh, login page, which is again stored on your server until and unless it is cleared, which can be done using the logout endpoint, uh, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But again, not secure. Try to implement something which is more secure. Then next would be sending a request to that particular endpoint with a get method uh, here you will see that i'm passing the header and verify is equal to false is equivalent to the minus k where we are ignoring these certificate if you do not give this then this is going to fail because there is a certificate error uh, so that is why it is always good to use verify is equal to false the next thing I'm doing here is again, if in case the credentials are wrong, which means that if I send this credentials over to the endpoint, I am going to get a 400 or 402 error, which is, you know, wrong uh, username and password. And if in case I get anything with an error code of more than 400, so basically the client error as well as the server side error are the 400 series and the 500 series so anything about that this is directly going to uh, redirect it to the uh, login page again here as you can see the response from the uh, from the request is saved in the variable r and here we are getting the request or uh, extracting the content out of that particular response and then we are converting it into a JSON object. Here if you, can, uh, you can see that I have also sorted this JSON object based on the client host name and the creation time. So this is just to make the output look pretty and you know, uh, you know have all the clients in one uh, section or one side all clubbed together and, all the, and also arranged according to the uh, save time. So this is for backups. So this is for save time. So let's take a quick look at how this looks like. So before that, we need to run the code. So to run the code, all I need to do is run python main.py. So as you can see, by default, this particular server is running on port 5000. So now this can be customized and you can use a port which is relevant to you, 8080 or 80 or 443 for secure connection it is up to you so that can be done with the uh, web server part of the code but this is a very simple uh, implementation wherein it is not using a secure socket and also oops it is giving you a very basic web server so this is again a bootstrap uh, framework which is really neat and very easy to implement so let me go ahead and put the credentials so this is these are the same credentials as your um, as the ones which you use to log into your nmc all right 
So by default, the landing page is your backup list. So here is your entire backups. So as you can see, it is arranged by client name. So S first O N and D later on. So I've also implemented this color format here wherein wherever it has recyclable it is going to mark it as red all right this is basically what i have so if i switch over here uh, and you will see that i have sent the entire content which is the json object itself over to the ginger template that i have for backups and here all i'm doing is uh, putting it in a for loop and going through all the entries that I have for all the objects that I have for the backup and uh, rendering each one of them. So you can add more information uh, again, depending on the information that is available on that particular JSON output or response that you have got from the networker API. Next, let's just take a quick look at the client as well. So the client endpoint here that I have is again, almost the similar definition but the only difference is that I'm uh, requesting a response from the client's um, uh, endpoint of networker and then I'm sorting it according to the host name and then just sending the content over to the clients.html and in clients.html again similar wherein I just have a table created and in that table I have all the values implemented so I just have a follow up here Additionally, because one client can have more than one uh, save set, so it is a list again, the save set list. A client can be assigned to more than one protection group, so again, that is a list. So that is why we have that as well. So if I look at the clients here, you will see that, see, Elias is a list. Then we have the all the information here, the host name, which is the name of the client. Uh, this is the resource ID. So resource ID is again important. So if you want, you can pick this up as well so that you can go and uh, query the individual client or in, if in case you're planning on doing, uh, allowing your uh, web app to edit the clients, then you can use this there. Your save set is a list as I had mentioned as well as the protection group. So let's take a look at how this looks like in our app. So here you have all the tabs or all the uh, links to the different resources that are available. So as I told you, I just have two resources right now. The rest are just placeholders uh, and also links to the blog of this particular uh, video uh, to my YouTube channel, the networker app, Play Store and Apple and also the logout. So let's take a look at the clients now. So again, clients, as you can see, I have all the clients that are configured in Networker. So if in case there are more than one save sets that are uh, configured, then uh, they are displayed here uh, as well. Or if there are more than one protection group, then they are displayed here as well. And obviously there is the logout, which is just going to log you out. So if I directly try to for example, go into clients. It will not allow me to go there because I don't have any username and password. I hope that somebody is able to, you know, create a neat little app out of this for reporting as well as any, you know, custom requests that uh, you have. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below, or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video. Goodbye.